After the earthquake and subsequent tsunami, Japan has been left devastated, with thousands dead and many more suffering from the effects of the tsunami. Here at UC Berkeley, students have been collectively and individually raising money to help the victims of this natural disaster. One Berkeley student shared with CalTV his efforts to gather support for Japan. My friend actually designed a t-shirt that he's selling for $10, and um, it says Rising Sun Relief for Japan, and we were together, we, we were trying to promote it, to advocate it to our friends. And as of now, I think we sold 160 t-shirts, and all proceeds um, from our campaign is going directly towards the Red Cross. A volunteer from the Red Cross organization on campus, Robin Katz, shared with CalTV their efforts in supporting tsunami victims. In the Japanese culture, uh, cranes are a symbol of hope and health, and 1,000 cranes, is ba if you donate that, is a wish uh, for someone's recovery. And so we're hoping to send 1,000 cranes to the Peace Park in Hiroshima. Despite the encouraging relief efforts by Berkeley students to raise money for the tsunami victims in Japan, it seems that this disaster has also revealed the ignorance that remains within some parts of American society. Social media networks such as Twitter and Facebook have allowed people to express their views about the recent disaster, with some Americans identifying the tsunami as payback for events at Pearl Harbor, failing to remember the two atomic bombs that were dropped by the US on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945. These posts and tweets have led some to question whether America is truly a post-racial society. Facebook and Twitter are both networks widely used by Berkeley students, and many admitted their own reliance upon the networks to find out about events such as the tsunami. I asked students on Upper Sproul how they felt about the recent postings on the tsunami, and whether they were aware of the online activity. I haven't heard directly any posts like uh, against tsunami victims. I don't see any reason why, why would people be against victims in any way, unless they're just racist and then, or ignorant and then we'll just, just know, I don't really pay attention to them. There's always going to be that kind of, those kind of people out there. Well, of course racism an issue is an issue in America. I think it's kind of interesting that people would talk about Pearl Harbor, which is something that's, what, 70 years old? I mean, you have to really stretch backwards to even know about Pearl Harbor. I'm kind of surprised that there's anybody, like, stupid enough to say something like that actually knows what Pearl Harbor is and doesn't think it's like in Rome or something, but so that's kind of interesting. I wasn't aware um, how much of an issue it was because I'm an international student and I didn't realize that it would be this prevalent here. I thought that American society had mo like moved on from this. Um, but not, not only has it been the tsunami, it's also been the um, Asians in the Library video that was uh, popular earlier this week that made me realize just how big a part of society um, racism still is. The aforementioned video made by UCLA student Alexandra Wallace reveals the extent to which prejudice still remains even on our own UC system. In this video, the student complains about Asian students in the school library and makes insensitive comments regarding the tsunami. Her video, along with recent postings on Twitter and Facebook, have become catalysts of a debate revolving around racial intolerance and the notion of free speech in online media. I spoke with Evelyn Nackner Glenn, an ethnic studies professor here at Berkeley, about recent events, which ultimately seem to indicate the continuing need for ethnic studies departments at institutions such as UC Berkeley. Whenever there's any kind of public issue, there will be people who somehow try to tie it to some kind of uh, a denigrating notion about some group or another. Probably the most um, pressing issues, I think, probably in the next few decades, really are around. Uh, race and gender inequality. Ultimately, it seems that racism still plays a part within American society. However, the distinction between intentional racism and ignorance seems ambiguous in certain cases. Despite the harmful comments made online, it seems the overriding sentiment here at Berkeley is directed towards supporting tsunami victims and attempting to transform preconceived notions of race within American society. Reporting for CalTV, this is Georgia Raja.